Now you did go through a desert. I did. We're on this family vacation and we get this call that someone, that our house is on fire. Then we get the next call to find out it was an arsonist and it was a total loss. We lost everything. Did you uh, go through a period where you started to sort of question God? Well, I have to tell you, there were days. To be able to say, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, blessed be the name of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, I believe is, um, because of his grace in my life. The testimony is God is faithful even in the desert. Hello, I'm Jeff Cavins. Welcome to the Bible Timeline Show. And today we're gonna to look at the desert wanderings. And it's so good to have you back again. The desert wanderings, oh, we love to talk about the desert. We love to talk about going around the mountain one more time. We're not getting it and uh, we're not learning our lessons, so here we are. Well, we'll find out what to do once you get into the desert, and we'll find out what God will do with you in the desert. It's, it's bad enough to live in the desert because of a decision that you made, but it is uh, a little, it's a little harder to deal with when you're in the desert because of a decision that other people made. And I'm sure that you might feel like that in, the, in the, the city you live in, the country you live in at times, is that I didn't make that decision, but I've got to live with that decision now. And so, Lord, I need help. So let's, let's, let's uh, approach this today from that perspective that we're in the desert. What can we learn? How do we deal with this? And our guest is going to be Melissa Overmeyer. She's going to be joining us in just uh, just a moment. And she is uh, someone who has gone through several different kinds of deserts in her own life. And so when we chose someone to talk about the desert wanderings, we wanted someone who's been in that desert and has something to offer, uh, offer to you. And by the way, uh, I actually did the forward to her book, uh, from Worry to Wonder, A Catholic Guide to Finding Peace Through Scripture. This is available through Ascension Press as well. And I'm sure we're going to be diving into that book and some of the, some of the things that she learned that she was able to put into the book. So let's pray. Let's ask God to bless our time together. And uh, I pray that, that you will receive something that will help you in the desert of your life. Amen. We'll be right back. And so it's an honor for me, Melissa, to have you. Thank you so on the much. Show. Nice to be here. But you've been you've been into scripture for years, haven't you? Yes, yes. My um, my mom was a Bible teacher. I was brought up Southern Baptist, and my grandfather was a Baptist minister. Mm -hmm. And so when I was twelve years old, I just I felt like the Lord. I got myself baptized. I actually took myself to the pastor and said, at eight years old, I want to be baptized. And then I started reading my Bible every single day. At 12 years old, I just, I made this commitment to the Lord. And I can remember my dad would come in and go, turn off the lights. And I was like, but I haven't finished reading this chapter. I just have this deep, deep, deep mm. love for scripture. And so I've been doing it now for many years and then writing and teaching. So let's situate ourselves as to where we're at in this lesson, the desert wanderings. Uh, they, they took a three month journey in the Exodus down to Mount Sinai. But even at that stage, prior to the desert wanderings, they're starting to grumble. Oh, yes. Already. And you wouldn't expect it. It's like, hey, you guys, you complained. Moses was sent to you. You're free. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like going on a family vacation. Yeah, you get to go on a family vacation. 20 miles out of town, stop fighting back there. <laughs> exactly. You know, in, in, the, in the back seat. So tell me a little bit about the, what are some of the grumblings that begin to take place in Israel's life? Well, it seems like every, every, every other chapter, there's a major happening. They, they start to murmur or grumble. And what I, just rereading it again and again re recently, it has been so convicting in my own life because it seems like this grumbling and murmuring is contagious. Mm -hmm. And it starts with one, and then it just sort of like this yeast just starts fermenting in the group. And before too long, the, the tide has turned from them being free to suddenly they're in slavery again, but it's to themselves and their negative attitude and they're speaking the problems. They're not looking at the answer. And thanks be to God, Moses is such a beautiful intercessor. Mm -hmm. And again and again, how the Lord answers them. But it seems like they had a gripe about just about everything. <laughs> and I have to see in my own life, hmm, is that me? What would you say the big ticket items are that they start grumbling about? 
oh well, no food, no water. They they start then they start complaining about the miserable food, which is the manna, of course. They start complaining. They I love this. They tested God. It says because they said, is he even with us anymore? Like where is this guy? Is, he, yeah. is this is this where we're supposed to be? And they really again and again and again, even though God has provided. They seem to have a very short memory about, well, look, here's what he's given you. You ask and he gave it to you. Mm -hmm. And then he gives them meat, like this beautiful cloud of birds that comes and lands, you know, right at their feet. And again and again, the Lord is so gracious. He, I mean, I my patience would have worn very thin at mm -hmm. this point, but the Lord is so kind and merciful and he just keeps giving. Yeah, yeah, he does, and we'll see that in the in the desert wanderings. Let's go. Let's go forward a little bit. Okay, we we went down to Mount Sinai in the Book of Exodus. We're there for a year. Lots of changes take place. You've got the tabernacle, the priesthood. You've got the Torah, the law, and God is forming these complainers. He's he's forming them into a people who will be his firstborn among the nations to go out and to influence and to influence the nations. And so suddenly the time comes, they're gonna break camp in Numbers chapter 10. We're going from Exodus to Numbers and he's gonna send 12 spies mm -hmm. up in the land. Mm -hmm. And what do they see? Well, they see a land flowing with milk and honey, mm -hmm. and they see some enormous grapes, we know, and they brought back other fruit, but then they also see enormous people. They see, what they feel like is something they can't overcome. Yeah. Even though the Lord again and again has said that I'm sending my angel with you, I will drive them out before you. He even promised hornets were going to come and little by little by little give them the mm -hmm. land. And he said, I'm not gonna give it to you all at one time so that the land doesn't go fallow. But I, as you move forward, just know that I'm gonna be driving the people out in front of you. But they don't believe it and what is really, I think, telling is who does believe it. And beautiful, you know, uh, Joshua and Caleb come mm -hmm. back. And I think Joshua has this incredible zeal for the Lord because he was Moses' assistant. And, it, and you read again and again how he never left the tent of meetings. He always stayed outside the tent of meetings. Mm -hmm. He dwelled near the presence of God. And so I think he had this incredible vision that this God that was a you know fire by night and this cloud by day, he wasn't going to leave them. He brought them so far. Why would he leave them now? And so he and his buddy Caleb, you know, are mm -hmm. strong, very positive, very positive. And they think, you know, of course God. He said he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Mm -hmm. And so they have a faith perspective. They start living life by a faith perspective compared to fear. And I have found that in my own life, that if I can live my life from a faith perspective, mm -hmm. instead of looking at my circumstances, looking at what my eyes see mm -hmm. and not what my heart knows is true, what my head knows is true because of my scripture background, then I can sink if I only look at my circumstances. We're now at the point where they have rejected God. They're not gonna, they're not gonna trust God and God says, okay, you know what? I've been giving you banana bread and everything else all this all this time. I've been feeding you. Your mm -hmm. clothes are not wearing out. I have showed you that I am powerful and I've I brought you out of bondage on eagles' wings. And I'm just asking you to continue to trust me. And they're saying basically, no. 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 We're, we, we, we're not going to trust you. And then God says, okay, then everyone who's 20 and up, you're going to die in this wilderness over the next 40 years. Mm -hmm. you're, you're the younger generation is going to grow up. They're the ones that are going to, to be taking the people into the promised land. So suddenly it hits them. We're in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And we kept thinking we were going to be in the promised land, but now we're in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And so talk to me a little bit about uh, what goes on in the people's in people's minds when they suddenly realize I'm in a desert, I'm in a dry place, and how do they complain? Mm -hmm. Well, goodness, I found myself in that in that place, and it is very important. I can't emphasize this enough when you're not getting the consolation. Mm -hmm. Because I think so many of us pray or read our scripture and it makes us feel good. Mm -hmm. 
when suddenly you're not getting the consolation and you're in desolation. It is so important to know scripture because I realized in, in my own life that at some point you have to love God with your whole head when you can't love him with your whole heart. Mm-hmm. And so I believe that is one of the beauties of the Catholic Church, is daily mass of these beautiful offerings that the church gives us. Of course, we have the sacraments to build us up, but to keep going, don't stop. That was the other thing is that children had to keep wandering. They mm-hmm. had to keep going. And I feel like that is what the Lord gives to us. He, he gives us streams in the desert. He continued to provide for them. And, you know, he forgave them but there's still ramifications to their actions. Um, And I think that's also, they had to come to grips with that in the Mm -hmm. desert. And I think probably one of the hopes that they had is that, you know what, we blew it, but our children, look, we have to continue to do this because we have to be formators. We have to be able to help our children to become the children of Israel. You know, they'd been in Egypt for 430 years. And I think to myself, uh, I have a Dutch heritage. If someone just said, oh, by the way, it's time for you to go back to Holland, you know, <laughs> I would not know how to be Dutch. You know, mm-hmm. I wouldn't know how to how to do that. And so it would take a while for me to become, you know, reacclimated. And I'm sure that the Lord, that's why he was so patient with them, because he, they were young people. They were rebellious people. But again and again, he gives them mercy. He provides for them. He shows them what to do. Yeah. And uh, in our own lives, we need to be able to listen to the verse voice of the Lord and know what to do. And we find that in scripture. From God's standpoint, there, there's God in the wilderness with all these people of various sizes and shapes and backgrounds and education and everything. And uh, what would you say, what was God's purpose for them? What was God trying to form mm-hmm. in these people who had a long history of of slavery, but yet way back in great, 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 great grandpa's Mm -hmm. life, there were promises to us Mm -hmm. that we were going to be a people. Mm -hmm. There was going to be a land. There was going to be a royal dynasty. Mm -hmm. Our people were going to be a blessing through Abraham to all of the nations. Mm -hmm. And, And suddenly, here you are, Lord, what are you trying to do with us? Mm -hmm. What would you say? Well. It doesn't look like what they thought it was going to look like. And when your life doesn't look like what you what you signed up for, like mm-hmm. this is not what I signed up for, do you, can you still trust God? And I feel like these people, uh, though they loved God in theory, the Lord says, if you love me, you, you'll keep my commandments, you'll mm-hmm. obey me. And they had a very rebellious heart. And so for them, it was a heart issue. And it seems to me this is one of the failures that they make is that they do see the gift of the manna. Mm -hmm. They do see the the water. They get Mm -hmm. some some, uh, uh, meat more than they wanted. Yes, out their nostrils. (laughs) At at one point. Right. But there is a failure to to draw a relationship between the faithfulness of God every single day with Mm -hmm. manna to give them food Mm -hmm. and the giver, the gift and the the giver. Mm -hmm. But they began to begin to look at the gift, and they want more of it. And since they don't have more of it, they draw a conclusion that God does not love us. God is not for us. Do you brought us out here to kill us in the mm-hmm. in the wilderness? But there's one verse that is so famous, and and most people have heard this one. It's sort of like John three sixteen, mm-hmm. for God so loved the world. But it is where God says, "I brought you out here into the wilderness." to show you something, and that is that man does not live by bread alone, alone, or the Mm -hmm. things you're complaining Mm -hmm. about. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word Mm -hmm. that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. That, to me, is worth talking about for Mm -hmm. a little bit. What does that mean when God says, I brought you out here to show you something, that you would learn this lesson, and that is, You don't live just by leeks and Mm -hmm. onions and meat and Mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. You really live by my word. Exactly. So this word avad, which I know you're very Mm -hmm. familiar with, to to worship and to serve God, you know, we can get so focused on the here and now, on the physical, which is what they were probably—I mean, I have to say I'm not out in the desert— 
you know, but he always provided for them. But we can get so focused on the physical that we forget what true life is, mm-hmm. which is, of course, God himself, you know. And so he, the breath of God, the Ruach of God, he breathed life into Adam and he wants to breathe life into this people. They're a body, but he wants them to have a soul. He wants it to be him that they're after, him that they're longing for, not just the bread, but the bread of life, the breath of life, which is God himself. Yeah. Now you did go through a desert. I did. A while ago. And I remember you you texted me and you told me what was happening. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, that is different. Now, deserts come in all shapes and sizes. Yes, they do. And uh, you can you can get a small, medium, or large. You can get <laughs> all different flavors of, of deserts. Tell me about a desert that, that hit you in the last few years. Okay. Well, ever since I came into the Catholic Church, I've had several deserts, um, just so you know. And... Uh, but God has brought me through all of them. So I, I don't want it to be a pity party because the testimony is God is faithful even in the desert. But when I first came to the church, my my sister-in-law who had Down syndrome was living with us. And then she contracted a very aggressive form of, of skin cancer and she died almost immediately after I came into mm-hmm. the church. Then I had a terrible accident and I was paralyzed. I cracked my skull and herniated my discs into my spinal cord and I was paralyzed for a while. And then it took about a year to get back from that. Um, then my daughter broke her neck and she was had a surfing accident. She recovered, thanks be to God. Then my sister, sadly, was had been an alcoholic and she came and was in recovery and she was doing great and she was at my house and living with us and all was well. And we went on vacation and she was going to house sit and we were so excited that she'd gotten to this next level. She died the night we left, mysteriously in our house. Then COVID hit. Then my husband started going blind because of some stress issues. So we leave to go on this vacation that we were going to finish after, because my sister, uh, when she passed away, so we go, we're going to finish our vacation. So we go back and uh, we're on this family vacation and we get this call that someone, that our house is on fire. And we thought, oh, goodness, because it was over Christmas. We thought, oh, maybe it was a Christmas tree or something. Then we get the next call to find out it was an arsonist who had come into our house and destroyed, purposefully destroyed the house and the, the exterior as well, and then had set multiple fires in the house. And it was a total loss. We lost everything. And <laughs> we couldn't really believe it. We couldn't get our head around it at first. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, it was such a difficult understanding of it to, to think, you know, you think, why? Um, and then I thought, you know what, I may never actually understand why, except for the Lord gave me a beautiful, beautiful um, way to deal with it in the desert. And it was to offer up what had been destroyed um, for the salvation and healing of the fellow that did it because that gave it meaning and purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that we have to do when we're in the desert is find a, 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 don't just waste your suffering. You know, I think the only tragedy in suffering is wasted suffering, Mm -hmm. right? So how do you, how do you basically find the silver lining? So if you find yourself in a desert, don't waste the suffering. Offer it up for something, right? Sure. So that's one of the great lessons I learned. And thanks be to God, I'd written that book, From Worry to Wonder, before the fire. And so it was scripture then. I, I, I preached my own self happy every day. I, I read my own book, you know, and I was like, if it's true for other people, you know, if I'm telling other people, then it has to be true for myself as well. Was it? Absolutely. It was my lifeline because it wasn't from me ever. It was God's word. And thanks be to God. He's so resourceful to give you. He always gives you everything in advance. Like for the children of Israel, I love the way he always provided in advance even for them. Like when they're exiting Israel, he lets them plunder. I mean, when they're exiting Egypt, he lets them plunder Egypt. Why? So they'll have everything they need to make the tabernacle. You know, he always gives you in advance something you're going to need. And so literally, I, I wrote my own self a book <laughs> and uh, was able to use what's in the book. And it really does. I can say it works because it worked for me. Well, you were in, the, you were in that desert 
Uh, I have a, a couple of questions. One is, in the middle of that desert, you're in one of the richest countries in the history of the world. You're in a very nice area in the East Coast. But that doesn't make a difference for a personal desert No, at it all. does not. Um, and you can have good things all, all around you. Did you, was there any time when that happened, any of the things that happened to you, mm -hmm. which we're all familiar with, we yes. all went through right. these, right? Right, No. Yeah. Well, I think so. <laughs> I think everybody has a story, yeah, everybody which is has amazing. A story, but yeah. you're, you have so many things that happened. <laughs> did, did you, did you uh, go through a period where you started to sort of question God and his faithfulness? And why would a person who is so dedicated to the word, so dedicated to the church, made the leap and came over to the Catholic Church? All these things are happening. Did you ever come to that conclusion of maybe I shouldn't have done these things? Or, Lord, bad things happen to good people? Well, I have to tell you, there were days that I I felt so low. I felt so low. Even reading my own book, I would, I would read it, and I would just. There was, I can't tell you the amount of worries between the insurance and the trial, you know, that was pending, mm -hmm. and everything that we were going through. The total loss of literally everything. We moved into a rental house, and we didn't even have scotch tape. You know, there's some things that you think, you know, oh, I'll just go open that drawer and find a hammer and hang a picture when you don't have anything at all. Like, mm -hmm. we literally started over from ground zero. And it was the little things. You know, I think it's the dust of the—that's probably what got the children of Israel was the sand, you know, just the sand all the time. Like, it's the little things. I think we can, we can deal well with the big things. It's the little things, I think, that sort of start to eat at us. And um, I did start to, 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 to thank God— Really? Like, what What are you doing here? Why is this? Am I missing something? Am I missing something? Like, what is this? And I have to say, one of the things that is in the book of Numbers that I just, is so beautiful. It's in uh, Numbers 8, I believe. And it just talks about the lampstand. And it says it was one piece of hammered gold from its uh, foot to its blossoms. And I thought, you know, the Lord, he, to make something beautiful, it has to be hammered. <laughs> it has to be tooled and formed and shaped. And then it's filled, that lamp is filled with the oil of the Holy Spirit so it can burn bright. And I really believe that the Lord, through all of these things, like I'm a much kinder, more compassionate, <laughs> more patient, which is very difficult for me. I've always been a very hasty person. Um, a much more, I think I'm more human mm -hmm. now because of it. And I can really relate to Job, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and and to be able to say, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, blessed be the name of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth, I believe is um, because of his grace in my life. And he has used it now to help me to help others. Absolutely. I was remembering your book, which I was able to do the forward, and, and some of the some of the things you, you mention in here are really focused on the Word of God mm -hmm. and getting to know the Word of God in the midst mm -hmm. of your uh, the in the midst of your your desert. Talk to me a little bit about how should people approach scripture mm -hmm. in the midst of the of their desert. Now, I ask that question because so many people, they'll say, well, I tried God. Mm -hmm. I tried God in the midst of my desert, which typically means I gave it a day or two. I mm -hmm. shot some prayers up. I read a couple Psalms. Mm -hmm. Nothing works. Right. And so how does God's word come to us mm -hmm. in the desert in a practical mm -hmm. way? What would you mm -hmm. say to people? Well, I'd say buy my book. No, <laughs> <laughs> there it is. no I would say. I got the last copy. Yes, yes. I would definitely say that um, for me to have a, a a everyday routine, what is so helpful is 
to know that the whole church is doing it with you. Mm -hmm. So to read the daily mass readings, and you can get those online for free and then open your Bible and find them. And I will say this, um, one of the dangers I, for me personally of having a missalette of some variety is that sometimes you know I'll just read it in that and I won't then go open my Bible. But what is wonderful is to use it as a jumping off point is to read the daily mass readings and then go find it in your Bible because mm -hmm. what the Lord does, it's as alive and it's like a two-edged sword. It will start to ferment in your life and, you, and you're going to want to read more and more and more. And so I would say one of the easiest things to do every day is to read the daily mass readings that are laid out. It's a beautiful plan, mm -hmm. reading plan, and pray into it and ask the Lord a couple of things. One is to open your heart to really have him speak to you as an individual. Lord, give me something that's going to speak to my heart today. And then the other is to, Lord, give me a desire to want to do this. Yeah. Because one or two days is not enough. You're going to need to start establishing a routine, just like going to the gym. Like, you can't go to the gym twice and expect to <laughs> be in great shape. You're going to have to do this every day. First, you'll do it, I believe, out of obedience. Then you're going to fall in love. And ask the Lord, ask that. I think he loves to answer that prayer. Lord, help me to fall in love with your word, which is you. Mm -hmm. Help me to fall in love with you. Well, that's good. And then it's delightful. Yeah. How do people deal with quiet mm. silence mm -hmm. in the desert to where you can hear your mm -hmm. own heart? Mm -hmm. And maybe it scares you, mm -hmm. but the area of silence and loneliness mm -hmm. in the desert, there are two things that mark the desert. And uh, did you experience it? And what would you say mm -hmm. regarding those two things? Well, for myself, um, yes, I did. And I, thanks be to God, again, because I have faith, I was able to cry out to the Lord. And the loneliness and the isolation of feeling um, like other people can't really relate to you, I, I really believe that that is a tool of the enemy because he likes to isolate. He loves to isolate. As a matter of fact, he does his best work when we're isolated. Mm -hmm. And so whether you feel like it or not, fellowship is a great remedy to isolation. It is. <laughs> and making yourself go and be with other people, be in, go to mass whether you feel like it or not, e even daily mass, to put, ask for the grace to be able to put yourself in situations, maybe at you don't even feel comfortable with at the mm -hmm. time. But I believe that when two or three are gathered together, ask your friends to pray for you. Don't be ashamed of saying, I I need some help in this situation, or I need, could someone please just come over and have the ministry of presence? And I think one of the problems for many people, such as myself, is you're prideful and you don't want to ask for help. But again, that's mm -hmm. of the enemy. And if we can be vulnerable in those times and ask our, our brothers and sisters to come around us in that time, fellowship is a beautiful thing and crying out to the Lord and asking him to be what you need in those times. Sure. And he does. So there's a num this has been good. And there's a number of things that we need to remember. And for those who are joining us, some things you can take with you. One is that God has, the number one thing is that, is that man does not live by bread alone. Man does not live by wants alone. But man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Man lives this way. We live according to his word. That's the way through the, through the desert. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned identity mm -hmm. and that identity is very important. Mm -hmm. We understand in the wilderness not only who God is, mm -hmm. But we understand who we are. And we are not just lost people who can't figure it out. We are his beloved. His beloved. We are his beloved. We are the bride. We, we are the ones that are created in the image and likeness mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. And the way we blow it so often, you know, in the wilderness, it's all, I could almost hear God saying, you're better than that. Mm -hmm. You're better than that. <laughs> I created you in my, in my you know, image and likeness. I've given you my word. Mm -hmm. I've given you... Uh, time after time after time, I showed you that I was faithful. Mm -hmm. You're better than that. Yes. You, you step up to the plate and trust me yes. you know, with, with your life. I am not going to let you down. Right. I can help you in the silence. 
I can help you in the in the in the loneliness. I can help you when when everyone laughs at you, when you feel like you're a complete failure. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you finally, mm -hmm. did we not cover something that you would love to share about the wilderness or your own experience that uh, if you if you leave me mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. in ten minutes, you're gonna say Right. Oh. Yes, I needed that. Well, the final thing I believe is that these were warriors, like they were ready for war, mm -hmm. but they never went to war. They weren't ready, yeah. yeah. You know, like they, they are, the census was made, he had brought them, they were equipped, and he was going to fight the battles for them, mm -hmm. but they didn't enter into the war. And I, we have been told we have the full armor of God. We are to enter into the battle, but not in our own strength, just like they were not going to have to do it in their own strength. Yeah. That You can take your promised land. And I believe that they could have even in, in, enjoyed their time in the desert had they entered into their rest mm -hmm. with God, had they known that he that they were his beloved and that they, they, they worshiped him in, in all the right ways and obeyed him and loved him. Um, they could have had their their promised land in the desert, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And for us as well, we absolutely, you know, have to know with the with the full armor of God that when we take um take up the the enemy on when he comes, we're not having to do it in our own strength. And and so we have to have the helmet of salvation. We have to know who we are and what Christ has done for us and and because of that, uh, be strong in the Lord. In, in our thought life. And then we have the breastplate of righteousness that guards our vital organs. And, you know, and we have the, the belt of truth, mm -hmm. which of course is the word of God and, and knowing it and, and renewing our mind to it, you know. And then we have the, our, our feet shod with the gospel of peace. So I love the thought that actually on the bottom of my boots, I don't know if I can lift it up. I have peace signs. I don't know if you can see them. Yes, I can. These are my peace shoes so that everywhere I go, I'm standing in peace because I take my peace with me. So it's not my circumstances that determine my peace. It's it's who I'm in, who I'm with, who I who who's whose light I'm standing in. That's what determines my peace. It's not my circumstances because your circumstances are going to change moment by moment. Mm -hmm. But can you stand in the peace? And it's knowing that you are God's beloved. And then of course the the sword, which is our offensive weapon. Uh, oh, our shield of faith. Sorry, I forgot about our shield of faith. And and these things come. Um, you get stronger. You know, if you're if you're training for battle, you're going to be a much stronger warrior further down the road than you are at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so God is going to train you up. But don't be afraid. Go forward. God has promised us the victory. Their problem was they never engaged in the battle. They didn't go forward. They didn't believe that God was going to yeah. bring them through. And so that's what we have to do. We have to be yeah. these strong warriors in the Lord and go forward. When He says go, when He says move, then we move and we trust Him. Knowing His voice. Knowing, yeah, knowing his, his voice. Knowing, knowing his, his, his word. Yeah, well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going we're gonna to get to know a little bit about you and studying the Bible and mm -hmm. how you go about studying the Bible. And I'm looking down at your Bible right now. We do have a segment where we ask to see your Bible. <laughs> And we're going to have to put sunglasses on to see your Bible. I can tell already. So we're going to we'll be back, and we're going to get to know uh, get to know you a little bit more in your the way you the way you get fed in, okay. in the Word of God. Hi, I'm Jeff Cavins, and I'm excited to introduce you to the Ascension app. It contains the full text of the Great Adventure Bible, the full text of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and both the Bible and Catechism in a Year podcasts. The app has special features that make the connections between the Bible and the Catechism crystal clear, like color-coded crosslinks and easy navigation. It also answers nearly 1,000 questions from Bible in a Year listeners about the Bible with videos from myself and others, also audio clips and excerpts from Ascension's popular books. To download the app, simply go to the App Store on your phone and search Ascension. I hope you enjoy it. I enjoy it, carry it around everywhere I go. So we come to that point in the show where we show off our Bibles. <laughs> now, some people, 
The reason I'm asking you how you do Bible study, and we're going to look at your Bible in just a moment there. I can tell that it's filled with all kinds of goodies. But I want to know a little bit about how you go about studying the Bible on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Like my wife and I, we do the gospel every morning. We pray together. We, we read it and talk about it mm -hmm. every day and have that time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, what, how, do, how do you go about getting to know the Bible mm -hmm. better? Well, so my whole life, I've just had this love affair with my Bible. So I can't wait every day to read it. And I feel um, if it gets delayed in the day, at some point, I just have to stop. Like I have this mm. burning hole in me if I yeah. don't read it. So, and I believe that that was because I prayed for that desire to want to read, to mm -hmm. know the Bible, to, to read the Bible and to know Jesus through it, God through it. Um, but so since I became a Catholic, it, so I used to play Bible roulette. I don't know if you ever used to yes, play I Bible have. roulette. And I would just open my Bible and whatever it was. And, and miraculously, the <laughs> Lord already spoke to me through it. So I, I don't think that Bible roulette is necessarily a bad thing. But what I have really loved is becoming a Catholic is having these daily readings. Yeah. So I... I read the daily readings and then I go to my Bible and find the daily readings because it's very easy to just get the small snippet that you get mm -hmm. in your misled or however you are getting them or off the internet. Yeah. But I feel like it is so important, sorry, young generation, but to have a physical Bible, not just to have an app. To be, believe it or not, I was I was laughing when I got this. I, uh, re, this is my new Bible. Mm -hmm. So um, my old Bible, if this had been thrown out the plane and run over by a truck, it would look my, like my old Bible because the cover is off my old Bible and all the pages are taped in it. So that sadly got lost, that got injured in the fire. So yeah. I can't travel with it. But um, this one is my pretty new Bible. And then I use this a lot for school. Uh -huh. um, so a lot of this has to do with uh, things that I'm working on it for school or things that just, you know, I really love. Mm -hmm. And so I mark them, you know, because I want to make sure that I'm, uh, that I don't miss anything. And I think, um, I like color and I, and it's fun. And then I also like to write in my Bible. I, I, I highlight my Bible. I don't know if you can see this. I highlight my Bible. Yeah. I love can I, can I put in a plug? I love these gel highlighters. Yeah. These are my new favorite thing in life. And I buy seen those. lots and lots of them. And I, I brought this one for you. Well, thank you. Because I think you might be a highlighter too. I am a, okay. I'm a highlighter. I use, I use colored pencils for oh, all of mine. And I have, uh, um, I have some special pens that don't bleed through India paper. Oh, okay. Well, try that. Pig, sometime. Pigma, pigma. But the, um, my other Bible, because I, I have several, I also do it in different colors depending on um, if it's a promise and if it's something that I'm that I feel right. like the Lord is 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 going to bring to fruition in my own life, and I'll put the date next to it mm -hmm. so that then when it does happen, I can go back and say thank you, God, for fulfilling sure. this promise. So in it's my kind life. of a it's uh, a journaly kind of thing. Yeah, but, but 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 it's better than a journal mm -hmm. because it's got the raw data of mm -hmm. God speaking, mm -hmm. and a you know a journal is if you have a journal in your Bible, you write in it once, it's sort of done. Mm -hmm. But if you have a code, mm -hmm. like I have a little code in my margin, mm -hmm. I put little codes and yep. marks in there and mm -hmm. cross references mm -hmm. and uh, CCC means catechism mm -hmm. paragraph that type of thing. So. Uh, well, yeah, that's good. So, you know, and not everybody, some people uh, uh, laughing, you know, saying their Bible's so holy that they don't want to, you know, sure. touch it or mess with it. Yeah. It's like, well, my Bible is my friend. And not only is it my friend, but I name them. Um, and so my bigger Bibles, I named uh, Excalibur. Each one has, is called Excalibur, and they have different numbers, one, two, three, four, five. And my small Bible that I carry in my purse is called Sting from, I don't know if you, Lord of the Rings, you know, for that was the hobbits. His little um, sword was called Sting, and of course, King Arthur had Excalibur. You never had a guest who so, named their Bible. Yeah, I named them because they're my friends. They're like my best friend, and, and so yeah. I, anyway... They That's speak good. to me and I speak to them. <laughs> That's good. Are you ready for some questions? Yes, yes. Because uh, we, we have a number of people who have questions for us about the desert wanderings. And, uh, and we're going to get into that. 
So let me give these questions to you, and we're going we're to get right to the point on these. And, uh, and uh, okay, so first question. Joe asks the question, uh, why does Moses, who is not allowed to enter the promised land, seem to be held at a higher standard than Aaron, who is allowed with his descendants to continue the priesthood? I believe that Moses was held to a higher standard because Moses spoke to God face to face like a man speaks yeah. to a friend. And Moses had this extraordinary grace. As a matter of fact, we know that it was so extraordinary that when he he felt the burden of so many people of, of leading them and judging them that the Lord said, well, gather these elders together and I'm going to take a portion of my spirit, my grace that I've given to you and I'm going to put it on, on them as well. So we know Moses had something literally in, in, a, in spades that nobody else had. And so because Moses was also the intercessor, though Aaron was a priest, Moses was always the one that was the intercessor. Moses had a unique opportunity that I don't know other than Jesus Christ. Do you know of anybody else that had such the relationship with with God throughout Scripture other than... No, there's a number of things. A friend of God, and they, he was the humblest man on earth. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so Moses was held to a higher uh, standard because there's no, never been anybody like him, and he knew better. I think he knew better. I think it was fear or pride that caused him to strike the rock instead of sure. speak to the rock, whatever it was. But... Whatever it was that caused him to do that, he knew better. Yeah. And I believe that that showed his disobedient heart. Like, and here's the other problem about murmuring. It, it, it so is contagious and infectious. It's like a wound. Like once it starts to just fester, it spreads to everyone. And I mm -hmm. think maybe it even spread to Moses in that instance. Right. Laura has a question. I'm struggling with the people suffering from a poisonous snake bite. <laughs> oh, I struggle with that too. But uh, just the bite. I don't like that <laughs> idea. They're struggling, they're suffering from a poisonous snake bite, having to gaze upon a bronze statue mm -hmm. of the snake to be cured. It sounds like an idol. How am I supposed to understand this? There is that, just to tell that story again, that. The, the children of Israel grumbled in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. we've, we've established that. And the, the punishment for the grumbling was God said, I'm going to release these snakes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to release the snakes and the snakes will bite. bite, them. They bite mm -hmm. They'll bite you. Well, the end of that is death, you know? Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're going to bite them and they're saying, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, no, we don't, we don't want that. And God mm -hmm. says, if you look at the serpent, mm -hmm. if you look at the serpent on the pole, on the pole, mm -hmm. then you will be Saved. healed. Yeah, healed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, the, before we get into what what you mm -hmm. you think about this, I just wanted to distinguish one thing. I think that the big mistake that we make is that we automatically think that that serpent that is on the pole in the wilderness is the same as a serpent in the Garden of Eden. The serpent in the Garden of Eden is the Hebrew word is nahash, nahash. The word for the serpent in the, uh, the book of Numbers there is seraph. It's the same word as seraphim. It is an angel, a guard. It can be, they're, they're used the same. In Isaiah 6, for example, the word seraphim is this, uh, that guards the, the presence of God is the same word as the, the, the seraph. And I'll get into that a little bit more. I'm curious what you, what, mm -hmm. you, what you think about that, but I just wanted mm -hmm. to distinguish that, that it's not apples and apples here. Mm, there, is, there is a difference between... Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't mean that the serpent's fun. No. And that, that's, that it's to be avoided mm -hmm. a, at all, but go ahead. Well, my understanding is from John 3, 14, 15, when Jesus says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so mm -hmm. too must the Son of yeah. Man be lifted up. Yep. And then in Corinthians, it says, he made him who knew no sin to become sins that we might become the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. So this picture of Moses makes this bronze serpent and puts it on the pole. And, and we see that then Jesus on the cross takes on our sin. So he takes on what has bitten us, sin, mm -hmm. that's going to kill us. Yep. 
and he redeems it mm -hmm. on the cross, right? And then the book of wisdom, uh, can I read to you this sure. one scripture? Okay, so I wrote it down. So this, uh, this show is okay. about the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So Wisdom 16, 5 through 8 says, For when the dire venom of beasts came upon them, and they were dying from the bite of crooked serpents, your anger endured not to the end. For the one who turned toward it was saved. And this is the beautiful part. Mm -hmm. Not by what was seen, but by you, the Savior of all. By this also you convinced our foes that you are the one who delivers from all evil. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't the, the bronze serpent that saved them. It was God, the Savior of all, and the picture then of Jesus Christ on the cross yeah. when we look to him. Uh, you know, and he takes on our sin, then he yeah. gives us yeah. well, that's his good. forgiveness and beauty. Okay. <laughs> okay, last question. Pat asks, why did God have a chosen people? Mm -hmm. And what made the promised land so special? Mm -hmm. Doesn't all of creation, including all men, belong to God? Does he hate the surrounding nations? Mm -hmm. No, he does not hate the surrounding nations. He loves all people. It is not his will that any man should perish. Right. Mm -hmm. And Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the promise made to Abraham that through him, all the nations of the world would be blessed. Mm -hmm. And so we see it through Jesus Christ. But like we had talked about earlier, there had to be a particular people at a particular time to bring forth this particular savior. And some people call it the scandal of the particular, that people do not like yep. that there was a particular choosing. Um, some people don't like that Joseph. Mary, <laughs> or, or, Mo, or even Mary, like, uh, sorry, as a Protestant, people often don't like the fact that Mary was chosen by God to be the mother of God, of Christ, mm -hmm. um, because they want her to be just like everybody else. But it's like, no, God, it was a particular choosing. It's, it's the scandal of the particular, God, but God is God. Yeah. So many times in the book of Numbers, I love it because it says, and it, it, God will say to do something, he says, and he doesn't say, and he just says, I am the Lord. You know, like, I am Groot. Like, deal, deal drop it. the mic. I, you know, you'll do this. I am the Lord. Boom. You yeah. know? And it's like, sometimes it's very difficult for us mm -hmm. because we want, you know, we want everything to be fair. You know, we want everybody. But the beautiful thing is, is that through this, then the Lord was able to bring us a Savior. But that Savior is for everybody. So good talking to you. And I'm so glad we could spend the time together and go over the desert wanderings and look at it from you know, the, the Bible's perspective, but also your life and what you've been through. And, and I'm sure that many people have been able to identify with that and, and take some lessons from it. So Aww. I appreciate it. Thank appreciate you, it very Jeff. much. Thank and, you so much for having me and on. And I'll say one more time that Ascension yes. did put your book out, uh, From Worry to Wonder, Catholic Guide to Finding Peace Through Scripture. Read the foreword. Excellent. <laughs> Best forward, part of the book. <laughs> as forewords go, yes. So let's close in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have given us the example of what to do in the wilderness, what to do in the desert, to, to guard our identity as sons and daughters of the Most High God, and to listen to your words and obey them. And we know, Lord, that we can live on, on, uh, we don't live by bread alone, but we know that we can live by anything that you say. And so, Lord, in the midst of our, our deserts right now and those who are watching the show that are going through a desert in their life, may they, may they really cling to your word. And as they read it, ask themselves, what are you asking of me, Lord? What is my next move? What are you saying to me from your word? Help us to take all of our thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ and help us to Truly be holy as you are holy. We thank you for the sacraments that give us this strength. We thank you for your word, the catechism, the communion of saints, the Blessed Mother, the Holy Father, the Pope, all the wonderful gifts, our local parishes and our pastors and our bishops. You have truly given us everything that we need to live a holy life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Thank you for watching. If you would like to see more amazing content on the Bible, be sure to like and subscribe.